Hey, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of ramping up, huh? I know. Yeah. yeah. I just um, agreed to teach this in the summer, so. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of my um, uh, writing instructor colleagues asked about you. And oh. everybody teaching so, like, in the summer are my partners. <laughs> That's a warning. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. No, no, they asked. I, I, trust me, I raved. And it's a, it's a good lineup in the summer. It's good. Yeah, well, we'll see. I I actually haven't taught in the summer before, so I'll have to. Yeah, it, it's lot. it's really just hard to um to reorganize into no time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, but, but once you kind of strategize that, it's 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 fun. It, and and is it three hours twice a week? Um, I'm doing. I think it's three days. I think it's three days. Oh, three days. Yeah, so is it two hours three times a week something like that yeah oh, interesting I've never actually done that one I was about to say three hours you get like I kind of love having three hours because it just gives you time to do multiple things do lots of things um, but yeah. it, it, it totally does suck on zoom <laughs> yeah you know, it's a lot that's a lot <laughs> yeah like like it's it's like I like like I, you have to do a lot of breakout rooms and stuff just because it's like, yeah. in the classroom, I can be like, all right, we're all doing this as a class. And then I'm like, go do this as groups. And then, yeah. you know, it, it just, sense. it's a little more, you know, to break it up, but yeah. Let me know who your partner is though. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, I remember liking summer classes in college. So it's like, you can yeah. focus and then get it. Kind yeah. Of done. And sometimes they're lighter too, which is nice. It kind of depends. Sometimes yeah. there's only like 10, which is like the best. Yeah. That'd be great personal hey everyone yeah hey guys sorry shop talk <laughs> always <laughs> 14 do we have 17 in this class 18 yes 19? we have 17 17 i'm really struggling to keep track of that and i haven't heard well you have seven <laughs> what you have seven class yeah. Like I yeah I know I cannot wrap my head around the back <laughs> you know it's crazy I've graded 90 papers in the last five days <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> yeah that's amazing it's it, well it's kind of cool because when you have so many like you have no choice but to be efficient like it's it's so like that's the hardest part of grading is you want to spend like an hour in every paper which is physically yeah. you know impossible no I don't know how like I'm I spend I'm spent I'm not done with them I'm <laughs> <laughs> no no it's like your brain adjusts it's just like in college you know when you guys I mean, you you guys probably all felt those when you first start you have so much work you're like there's no way I'm not I'm not made for college I can't survive this and then you suddenly realize you're capable you just have to learn how to you do it yeah. differently it's crazy. <clears throat> it is crazy <laughs> all right 15 14 so we're only at yeah 15. come out guys come I want to see your tired faces yeah <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, um I have a I have delayed asking them about their delicious food that they've eaten <laughs> so, yeah you've waited I'm here it's been the Super Bowl so I expect that some of you will say oh yeah oh, right Super Bowl Super Bowl dips I made like a giant thing of guacamole that's like the best guacamole I've ever made and <laughs> you didn't even get through like half of it <laughs> we also made too much guacamole it's so hard like when you're just like two people <laughs> like, I want all the food <laughs> I just well, thought I just thought we'd crush it and we did not <laughs> we did not and I was eating it for the next two days but it starts to get it starts to look worse it looks bad day two but it still yeah. tastes fine and then day three or you know you're pushing it so <laughs> Sad guacamole Sad, yeah <laughs> who else had some yummy food since last time we talked or Super Bowl on the Super Bowl yeah. Nothing. I know you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy. Or if you don't want to talk about food, um, favorite Super Bowl commercial and least favorite Super Bowl oh, commercial. You you watch the That's Super Bowl. Good. I feel like people have opinions on that. Yeah. I know they do. Or on the Super Bowl itself. <laughs> it's, oh my gosh, you guys. This is um, not personally, yes. 
I yeah. haven't seen it because it was like 3 a.m. in Spain. So yeah, I so wasn't no. awake. <laughs> really ethnocentric question i guess We're i know like, it yeah. really it is the u.s it's a very u.s centric topic <laughs> whoops whoops okay so fair well ruth is, gets a pass everybody else who is in america <laughs> you guys are, are stubborn but i think i'm more stubborn so <laughs> i will make you i will make you share <laughs> i was just happy to see the chiefs lose personally because uh i'm a niners fan so they beat us oh, last year yeah last year yeah, yeah. so i was so happy, I very happy to see them lose oh that's good i i don't care that much but like i did grow up in kansas so like all my friends are i'm not a big football i'm a basketball because i yeah anyway i'm a basketball fan so like i don't really care about football <laughs> but yeah i mean i understand that you felt vindicated yeah. Well, I'm a Seahawks fan, so that means we're not probably on the same team, but in terms of Niners, but I really don't like the Patriots. So that's why I was torn. I was like, I kind of want Tom Brady to win to stick it to the Patriots, but he's still kind of a Patriot in my mind. So I was a little torn, but in the end, I guess I was, I was happy with how it turned out. I feel like it's like, it's so easy to hate Tom Brady, but like, then at some point it gets like so ridiculous that like, don't you kind of like start rooting for him to just be like, yeah, I love ridiculously him. good. Yeah, you can't. How do you not? <laughs> Best ever, guaranteed. Like, there's no question anymore. Like, it's insane, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I were him, I would re- totally retire, though. Like, I, I, I know he just loves it, so he's not. Gonna I think he wants like one ring for each hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for each ring, that's it. Yeah, just keep going forever, right? It's so crazy. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Anyway, <sighs> all right. Last, last chance for food. Super Bowl commentary. Uh, I didn't watch the Super Bowl because I didn't realize it was this sun, like last Sunday. I did not know that Super Bowl Sunday was in February at all. (laughs) But I totally missed it. That's so. Honestly, I think it's it's definitely it's such a social kind of event that if you're not if you're not going out and about and meeting up with people. You know, it's just, you don't, it's, it's definitely less on your mind for sure. Also, it's kind of a weird season. Like they, you know, they made fake noises almost for all games, like fake fan noises. There's like nobody in the stands, but they still had the crowd noise. So we were so confused because they said it was like, you know, 25% capacity. And then you see the stands look full. And then we realized it was all the cutouts. And yeah. we- <laughs> you could pay like a hundred dollars to have a cutout of your face sitting at the Super Bowl. <laughs> So weird. But the, but I guess but I guess they were also entered in a contest to get tickets for next year's Super Bowl. So like it was more like a, that kind of game. But I was like, who would pay a hundred dollars to not be there? Like, what are we talking about? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like at this point in my life, like we've been at home for so long. Like I'm just like any little thing that's like different. I'm like, we're into it. We're totally doing it. Like, yeah, totally. Like, in our house. <laughs> I just ordered so many Valentine's decorations. My house is just going to be covered in hearts. Like, oh, I love it. I love that's it. all I have. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, wow. So we are to 13 today. Bad turnout, guys. Nobody wants to come to my class. Yeah, I don't think I got I'm any. Taking it personally, it really hurts my feelings. <laughs> Just kidding. Most of you guys did the homework, it seems, so that's really good. And we can actually play with that now. Let's do a Kahoot to see how you're absorbing that reading and um, and the modules, the information literacy tutorials, and the lecture. They're super basic questions, so y'all will be fine. Um, teach so let's start there I feel like it kind of energizes us too if this conversation doesn't energize you and I play I think I'm gonna do terribly yeah play <laughs> sure I know actually I think you'll do great at this this one in particular I, I think you'll absolutely you'll, you'll, you'll block this one. last one I would not have done great at. yeah it, it kind of depends but this this one is uh um you'll definitely do great okay wait and press the share screen button there we go Here, all right. Score that music.
I've never heard that name before, and now there's two of you in the class. All right, cool. Let's do it. Firsthand knowledge, right? It's it's the it's the primary focus of your paper, um, and as you probably remember from the lecture, it gets a little slippery at times because your primary focus could be on something that's not a live event or a time in history. It could be focused on another paper or even a secondary source written about a primary event, which gets all kind of weird. Noah, killing it, nice. Oh, this one's this one's so tricky. Um yeah, so in the live event, so if you watch the lecture, you probably thoroughly and carefully, um, the, the live event is kind of what we're taught as kids, you know, that they explain as kids. It's what we're taught earlier when we learn about primary and secondary sources, right? That um, if there's an event and you're, and you're at the event, you're a primary source. But if you're like outside talking about the event, you're a secondary source. And it's like this interesting metaphor, but it gets really confusing when um, you're not talking about an event. So it's really a source that reports on or analyzes that primary source. The primary source is that primary focus of your paper. So uh, for this class, for example, your primary source um, could be a lot of things. If you are suggesting a particular policy that already exists in a certain state, it's likely that you might end up using um, a, uh, a, the, an existing policy to see like what it is that they that they've used that could maybe be your primary source and then looking at critiques of that policy may be your secondary sources and you may use that to kind of inspire your piece. Um, outside of this class, this changes all the time with discipline, which is why it's important for you to just understand because some professors are really going to be picky they're going to say you must use three primary sources and 12 secondary sources, which will be way too many. Um, but um, I want you to understand what that is so then you know moving forward okay. So just to clarify, a primary source is this, a secondary source is this. And another thing to note is always just ask if you're not sure, like you can always verify. So is this the primary source and is this the secondary source? Because again, it gets slippery based on what you're writing about. And this one was tougher. Ah, nice. Yeah, good. I have such wordy answers and I realize that totally slows you down. I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> but um the I think it's really I think it's really that we we're <laughs> we trust ourselves. <laughs> I just, I really, it's really weird. It's really weird make, like being a quiz maker. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, how do I make this seem like it's at least pertinent? Yeah, <laughs> that hits close down. I'm just like so wordy. Um, yeah, so um, the general rule is uh, uh, scholarly sources are more reliable than popular. And I will say um, I've read uh, all of your topic proposals. Um, a lot of you did use... Um, a lot of you had scholarly sources, but a lot of you did also have uh, popular sources that feel like scholarly sources. And it gets a little weird because um, what is scholarly is not doesn't mean what is legit. So that's something that's really important to think about that um, a government website or the CDC or the FDA, that is oftentimes legitimate, but it's actually not considered scholarly. Um, 
which is weird, right? Because you're like, but it's a good source. It should be reliable. Um, so when we're asking for scholarly, what we're, we're not just asking for you to find legitimate sources, and that's a huge part of it. We're asking for you to find a source that's been heavily vetted in the spirit of academia, which is where you are operating right now. We're asking for you to look for sources that are written by scholars who spend all their time doing research on this, not necessarily um, government organizations or think tanks or um, groups that may have their own varying interests in the things that they're publishing. Um, a lot of times academics are, are, are doing a level of research that other organizations are not. Um, and it, we're just trying to get you to really engage in this scholarly field because that's what we're asking you to write. We're asking you to write like scholars. So, um, can I just interject? I think that like, like in the context of your research and like economics, a lot of the government websites are going to be like more of the primary sources. Like yeah. you might say like, I want to know how much meat is consumed or produced in the US, right? You can find that at the USDA website and you should definitely cite that in your paper, right? Like those are great sources of information, particularly like numbers and statistics. Um, but I think when we're asking for sources, we're asking for those like scholarly analyses, right? So definitely cite the like government websites and those are credible sources of information, but like that's not quite what we're looking for with the like sources that we're asking you to, to like our source requirements for you. Yeah, when we say scholarly. And, and that's because, I mean, some oftentimes the obvious source is, um, are those government sources for data, which is, which is awesome. And again, like it, do not confuse scholar, like popular but not legitimate. Like popular sources can still be legitimate and calling them popular is already kind of this weird um, <laughs> snooty academic positioning. Um, so kind of ignore that. It's really more just the ideas we're asking you to bring to the table are gonna be really similar to the ideas that other scholars are saying. And it's really, really helpful for you to read those scholars' his ideas and positioning because that's gonna inspire you on how you're going to position your own ideas and share them. Um, it, it, again, it's kind of getting you um, engaged with the vernacular and the, um, not the jargon, it's the same word. Um, it's getting you fluent in academic language, which is something that's important for the rest of college because we're gonna be asking you a lot of times to write in that way. Though of course your specific discipline, it'll shift more and more to, to whatever your specific discipline is. But yeah, and we'll talk more about this. Um, because it sometimes gets really confusing. You're like, it's a good source, so why doesn't it count? And it's like, well, we're asking for scholarly for not just for legitimacy, that's part of it, but it's not the whole picture. Nice and it's thought you're on fire. <laughs> I know this one this one's so mean everybody does bad on it because I kind of trick you um eliminate is the wrong word and again like I hate this about myself I hate that tests do this and I just did it to you um so synthesis is grouping different pieces of information together um to identify connections and patterns not to eliminate them so you actually want to find these uh, connections and patterns so this is a pretty tricky one which is a little unfair um, and again, synthesis is my favorite thing because it is this, this capability our brains have. Like human beings can look at a group of things, a group of ideas um, from scholars or, or even sets of data, and um, we can actually start to draw connections and make inferences from them. Now, those aren't always good, which is what's really cool about this class is you get to see some of those weird uh, correlations <laughs> of eating chocolate and like... I don't know, what was it, suicide rates? It was like crazy, just stuff, stuff that doesn't actually correlate, right? Um, but that's actually using the ability to like identify patterns. Um, it's actually how we've discovered a lot of really interesting things or how we've how we've really learned, oh, wow, like one, one policy here actually affects things in this way. Um, it, it's given us the opportunity to look back at decisions we've made and kind of reassess. But it's also something we do in the research process. We sit here and we go, okay, I have this scholar saying this thing. I have this data. I have this idea and position about eating meat. Um, how do I now form this into a coherent idea or a policy? Um, your brain has the ability to do that and it's incredible, um, but you have to kind of take a step back and be able to look at all your information to be able to activate that. 
So um, I'm just obsessed with synthesis because it's basically what you do in the writing process. Professor Kaplan, you're on the board. <laughs> All right, Cormac, to the top. Nice work. Yeah, this is Diddy Watch. <laughs> yeah, wow. I did trick a lot of you. Yeah, so um, this is just a CP red. It was a Salem Witch Trials. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to say about that. Again, I, I wanted to use a live event to kind of take what you're usually taught in high school about primary and secondary sources and then kind of um, turn it on its head. So yeah, it was the same. And if you just click through, you would have guessed court case. I love whoever picked Judge Judy. <laughs> I was like, that's the easy one. You can eliminate thought. Pure in artwork, like maybe, I don't know. Um, all right. <laughs> Judge Judy. Funny. Brenda's on fire. Cormac's still at the top. He's, I really need to learn like what these boards because they like give you these sport. Like I don't, I don't understand the point system, which I don't love. I wish I did. Oh yeah. Yeah, most of you got it. Uh, Hannah Library and Google Scholar. Um, oh, actually, I want to show you guys one more cool thing that Google Scholar does that I just learned about from one of my students. Um, yeah. Um, can somebody tell me, so I've been talking so much, why, uh, why use Hannon versus, why use, why use the Hannon Library database? Um, and why, and why do I say that Google Scholar is also a great resource um, considering Hannon's limitations? So why is Hannon good, but kind of limited? And why is Google Scholar good at filling that gap? Let's see if I can see all your faces. I don't see your faces. We only sort of don't remember. All right, well then I'll talk a little more about that before we get to the activity. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second then. So let's see how everyone did. Thomas in third, nice. Brando in second. Professor Kaplan, what if you get it? <laughs> it's Cormac, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that's super up there. <laughs> awesome, and Michelle and Colin, not too far behind. Nice job, Cormac L. Cool. Okay. I was forgetting I'll tell it to stop singing at me. Um, let's do this. So I really want to emphasize a couple things about Hannon and um, Google Scholar. Um, well, can anybody remember why I say Google Scholar is a good alternative to Hannon? Because you thoroughly watched that lecture and you paid attention and it was so cool. Breaking my heart left and right. It's because uh, Google is way better at search. <laughs> we know Google is just good at search, right? Um, that's what they they kind of in, they didn't invent search. Like, does anybody remember Ask Jeeves? Like, I don't know if you guys are alive during Ask Jeeves. There's Ask Jeeves. Do, Yahoo was also just a search platform. It was not um, an email uh, server or provider. Um, there were actually a ton of search uh, options when the internet first came out um, and Google kind of came out of nowhere and then took over. Uh, and, and one of the reasons is they're really, really good at search. Um, and they're also really, really good at um, understanding you and your brain and then applying that to search, which is creepy and also effective. So um, Hannon is wonderful because when you use Hannon, oh yeah, I'm gonna show you one thing. All right, just cause I gotta make sure you guys get this. Um, when you use Hannon, um, you first of all get direct easy access to something you pay for, which is um, subscriptions to thousands and thousands and thousands of articles, books, um, academic databases, uh, 
when most of the time when scholars publish articles and books, they want to get paid. So there's oftentimes a paywall. So if you were to just find something on Google, you may not be able to get it for free, but because you are enrolled in L at LMU, you all get as part of being a student here access and I got it as being a professor, access to this massive database of scholarly works. So one thing I just want to remind you about Hannon, when you're looking for um, articles specifically, um, OneSearch is wonderful because it's not, it, it includes JSTOR, it includes EBSCOhost, it includes a handful of other um, databases. So instead of going to just one of those and hoping that you can find something within there, it actually is a broader search and it includes a library catalog. So when you go to OneSearch, Sure. Um, when you go to OneSearch, you get a lot of really cool options. Uh, so I'm just putting in something I search for a student or I don't know, last time I did this example. Um, let's see what comes up. So you will have to sign in like right now. I'm just a guest, uh, but something to keep in mind uh, because OneSearch and again, I want to show you guys all how to get there. When you go to just library.lmu.edu, it automatically goes to the catalog. The first thing it's really looking at is just what it has in stock in the library. That's not what you want, especially because none of you are there in person. Although, side note, if you do find a book at the library you want, if you're in the, the US, they'll they'll mail you the book <laughs> and they'll like lend it to you. Um, and if you're not, they'll, they'll, they will also scan pages for you, which is crazy. So they're really trying to offer support to you guys um, right now. But when you come to this page, click OneSearch. You can also go to journals. Um, sometimes your your professors will say, oh, this is a great journal for that for research on that kind of topic. Um, reserves is when your professors put like a, <laughs> I don't think they even do this anymore. They used to, I mean, they have it where your professor has like a special, like their personal copy of a DVD and they want you to go into the library and watch it. But OneSearch is, is the money database because it reaches all different, it uses multiple types of search um, and it hits the library catalog, but you have to click this. So if you go to catalog, you're going to be getting books and then you're going to be having to dig through um, ebooks or try to get access to the hard copy. Whereas OneSearch can actually give you access to articles, which for this class in particular, you're less likely to be using books. You're much more likely to be using articles. So clicking OneSearch, just an arbitrary search. The other thing I want you to click, because right now OneSearch, it brings up an ebook. Um, it brings up news articles should bring up regular books too. Um, <clears throat> it does bring up some journals, um, but it, it brings, there's a lot of stuff in here that you may not need. So you can go to the left where it says limit to, click scholarly peer reviewed journals. Um, and clicking that, it's going to eliminate all the books and just bring up um, peer reviewed scholarly articles. So if we say you don't have any scholarly sources, go to OneSearch, then click the scholarly peer reviewed journals and then we're here. Um, and all of these provided are there for you. Um, what's also cool is if you're doing something, I mean, policy wise, you should probably do something that's not more than 10 years old. I mean, it, it could be depending on what it is. I would try to stick in 10 years or less. Um, it doesn't mean that old research isn't valuable, but um, you can actually change this, this date range too to make sure that you're not finding something that was pertinent in the 80s that is now really different. The world is way different now than it was uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago. So um, even 10 years ago. Cool. So this is using OneSearch. I love OneSearch. I want you to understand first how to get to OneSearch um, by clicking this, because I have students who are like, yeah, I went to Hannon Library, and then they only search under catalog, and they're only finding books. Um, but then also, I want you to know about this money. Um, it's like the best thing you pay for. Uh, Chat. Okay. So here's what's cool. During the school year, you usually have 24 hour, 24 seven access to a librarian right here in this chat. So if you are, so the chat is here right when you get here. So first of all, if you're like, I don't even know what to look for. You said, I forget. My professor told me how to search for peer reviewed journals. I forget. I'm trying to find something about this. They're going to help you out with that. Additionally, if during your search, you're searching things, you're struggling to find what you want. The chat box is also here. If you click an actual article, ugh, it always makes me do this part. If you click an actual article, um, it'll bring you to the article page. And then let's say, because this happens sometimes again, because the linking system within Hannon Library is less reliable than you will find on Google. Um, let's say I click the read on mine and the link is dead, it doesn't work. I can go to this librarian, I can say, hi, what's going on? 
I'm trying to find, copy and paste this article into this box. This article, I can't find the full text, can you help me? And they'll usually help you. Um, during business hours, you're usually talking to an actual LMU librarian who's at LMU right now. Um, but after like normal business hours, there's this collective of librarians across the country um, available to you to help you research. So this is such a huge, huge resource, especially if it's late at night and you're freaking out because you can't find something and you're ready to give up. This person can help you. Um, and I have students in other classes who are like, I have like 2 a.m. <laughs> discussions with the librarians um, about certain topics and it's awesome. So this resource saved me as a student when I was really struggling to find something I needed. Um, Cause sometimes search terms, learning how to use LMU's OneSearch, learning how to use um, a lot of these more classical database research um, algorithms is kind of hard because they need specific words that you may not be familiar with. They need specific language choices. Um, and sometimes you don't know what those are until you start researching and get into the field, which is why Google as an alternative, Google Scholar is also really wonderful. So Google Scholar, let me do this one. Um, I literally just Google Google Scholar, but it's scholar.google.com. Um, you can Google stuff and it'll actually have, tell you if there's a full text right here on the right-hand side. So if you can actually get access to the full text, because the problem is they'll bring up books or Google will bring up um, articles. Okay, I gotta show you that. It'll bring up articles that uh, you may not have access to. So if there's not a, a PDF there, like you see a lot of them don't, you can also click on like, there's the all version, like underneath there's often like different versions and sometimes that will be like, oh yeah, all nine versions. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. And then, then a lot of times that will bring up a, a PDF there. Oh, that's, and oh, I that's just, so good. I didn't know that. Yeah. And then I, I just also wanted to say that, um, like if you find something that you don't have access to, cause we don't, subscribe to like every single journal in the yeah, world yeah. so if you find something you need that you don't have access to like email me because I can probably get it for you um absolutely never pay for anything but like even if you see something and you're like well I guess I can't use that um just email me with the citation and and I can I have friends at different institutions and I can probably get you the the paper yeah so that's a huge resource and sometimes the librarian can help you figure it out so, so you can say like, I found this on Google Scholar, I'm trying to get access and they will be able to help you get access sometimes as well. Um, that's a huge resource. Okay, so but here's the other money thing. So when you're on LMU's Wi-Fi, um, you actually will be able to get access to full text through the LMU library using Google Scholar search. But what's cool and that I just discovered um, is that you can actually connect um, to LMU's library through Google Scholar. So if you're on the Google Scholar page and you go to settings, I'll go back again, you click those three bars that represent settings, click the little guy, the, what is that, you know, bolt looking thing, settings, um, you can go, you go to library links and you can actually type in, so I typed in Loyola Marymount and I'm linking to all of Loyola Marymount's resources. So then when I'm actually um, searching things, um, it is, it is, it's telling me what I can get for free through LMU as well. So this article would otherwise have not been available to me if I didn't link to the LMU library. So that's another really, really cool op option for you um, while you're home or away from LMU to be able to get access to these things. So there's tons of way to get access to articles. And, and again, it's the worst when you find like the perfect article and then you're like, oh, it's $40, what are we doing? Um, usually there's a way we can help you out. So just, uh, that's another reason to not work on papers the night before they're due and things like that. So you actually have time to find the best sources that you identify um, and be able to read them and really, really use them to your advantage. Okay, can I, so the reason I'm showing you all those things, yeah, do something to ask. Just while, you, while we're on Google Scholar, could you pull it up one more time? I just wanna show them yeah. one more. Yeah, no, please yeah, I love teach me too, because I did not know about <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm learning. Some, I didn't know about the, the library all from you, because I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I know, that's the best though, because no, one of my students just told me about adding LMU library. That's, that's so, so good. I'm definitely going to do that. Um, yeah, yes. Okay, so when you find, like, sometimes you might find a paper that's, like, really spot on, like, what, it's hard to search, right? And then you find one that's, like, really what you're interested in, um, and so it's easy on Google Scholar to find related papers, right? So, mm -hmm. 
one thing that I love is this cited by. No, so yeah. if you, yeah, if you look at, by, yeah. so if you see that cited by, um, and a lot of times for like a review article, it'll be like hundreds of papers, right? So you can click on that cited by, and that'll bring up so, all of the like research that has cited that article. And then you can even search within that. Um, yeah, so cited by, cited by. You, yeah, so if you click on, if you click on that cited by maybe on okay. the, yeah, one of them. Yeah. So like this will bring up to so this one just has five, right. But like, sometimes it will be hundreds. And then yeah. you see, there's a little box at the top. Uh, yeah. So click on the, yeah. Search within citing articles, right. So then you can even search within the articles that cite the article that you've identified is really relevant to your that is topic. So cool. I had no yeah. idea you could do that. Yeah, it's really nice because oh then you get, because obviously if you find an article, you can see all the article, like you can see their citations, like the older research, right? But this allows you to see the yeah. newer research that builds upon that paper that you identified. Yeah, and actually this is actually great. So the, the Salem Witch Trials is a great example, right? Because let's say I'm researching the Salem Witch Trials, the actual historical event. Um, the Salem witch trials are referenced a lot of times for a lot of reasons as a metaphor, um, you know, the, the term of witch hunt, things like that. So you can see a lot of these aren't even about the Salem witch trials. <laughs> um, so that can tell me a lot of things too about the terms I'm choosing to use and um, whether or not I'm putting things in quotes. Um, and at, like, like teaching students about violent media effects, um, pretty irrelevant to the Salem witch trials topic, right? And yet there was still some sort of relation. These people cited an article that was maybe about Salem witch trials or maybe was also too vague, so, or too broad. So research is just one of those things. You get better at it as you do more of it. Um, the more familiar with the field you become, uh, the more the, the more you are able to use the proper search terms. And then you get on this zone, which is the coolest part. Um, and you guys will probably experience this. I mean, some definitely a few students experience it freshman year because they like nerd out and they get excited. But um, you usually get it junior senior year when you're when you're working in your discipline on a project and you just get pumped and like you get into this zone where you find more and more evidence and you get so excited because your synthesis is like working full time. Um, and you you come up with a really, really cool paper and you're able to suddenly connect all this research together and it's beautiful. It's like the best. Um, you may not experience that in this class if you're not super passionate about stuff, but you also may if you really dig into it and start to like learn a lot and like follow your interests and let yourself get passionate. Um, it happens and it's really, really magical. <laughs> it's a magical thing, research. Um, okay, so let's see. Wow, we start at 50. Well, that always takes more time. Anything, anything else to add, <laughs> Professor Kaplan? Because that was all really good stuff. Um, no, I mean, like, I think those are both really good resources. Like, I, I, yeah, I was gonna show you how to do that Google Scholar stuff, like when we talked about the lit review. So, like, you'll oh, notice oh. that. Well, you know, you can do, you can quiz them and see if they were paying attention. Okay. It will be really useful for you if you are stuck and you just can't find stuff. Yeah. Um, just reach out to me because I can also help with the like search terms. A lot of times, there's like weird jargon that we use, hey, like in specific fields, that. and so like you might just not know the word that we use for that. So I can help always yeah, with that's um, you. That's you. finding things. And again, which brings you back to the starting the research process earlier, and this is like a big part of college. And I feel like you guys are in a weird place where you may not learn to rock this in the same way you would have if you were in, in person where like you end up having so much on your plate, it's really, really, really challenging to do the, I'm gonna do it right before it's due thing. Um, it just gets harder. And I know that professors have been more flexible online and things like that. I don't want you to be crushed next year when you come back. Um, and the expectation is that you're like really on top of things. Um, so to start things early, if you have to give yourself an arbitrary fake deadline a couple days before something's due, I highly recommend it because when it comes to research, you need to give yourself time. Like you have to. And sometimes you're hitting your head against a wall and like you just can't find anything. You should be, if you, you should hopefully have enough time to take some space, <laughs> email your professor, calm down, <laughs> figure it out. Um, and then come back and maybe a new term will come to you, a new idea or your professor will be able to help or the librarian. Um, there's so many options for you. So um, I really wanna encourage you to be on top of things a little bit more, um, a little bit earlier than, than the due date. And because that is definitely something that's required, especially as things get harder and more intensive as you go through college. They get harder and more intensive, but you get better. So it, it's kind of, it doesn't necessarily feel harder um, if you get better. Okay, so 
we're going to start an activity. Um, it may be hard for y'all to finish it um, in class, but we're going to try our best. Well, let's see what we can do. Um, so this activity, yeah, okay, cool. I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms, um, into your cohorts. Um, and this activity basically kind of forces you guys to, as a group, go through the research process together in a very efficient manner. Uh, the reason I like it is because you, as you continue to work, you, sh you, should, you should understand that there is an efficient way to research. Um, and a lot of times that means you spend time looking for articles and skimming them, looking at the abstracts, looking at the intros, maybe the conclusions. Um, looking at some of the ideas in those articles, um, and it, if it feels like it's, it could, it maybe will work. You mark it, you download it, whatever. You move on, um, and you find a handful of those first, and then you actually sit down with them and, and dig into them um, and see if they're actually usable for your for your purposes. That's a more efficient way to research, um, especially when you have to have so many sources. Sometimes just finding a handful to start to give yourself a little bit of the vernacular and the jargon um, to get familiar with the ideas. Um, and then you'll likely be returning to research more later after that point. Um, but um, it shouldn't be, you search for one article for th you know an hour, you find it, you print it out, you read it, you sit down, you annotate it. Um, and then you only have one article that may or may not work. Instead, you want to really, really be able to efficiently look through, you wanna be able to look at an article and be like, is that good or is that not good? Um, you'll of course be investigating more later, but this activity that I'm going to be kind of pushing you to do quickly, um, forces you to be able to skim and try to glean the purpose of an article and whether or not it's pertinent to your ideas from the top. Okay. So what it is, and I'm going to share my screen again, you can, you, you'll go to class for today. Uh, yeah, share. So in your groups, you guys are just going to, the first thing you need to do, and like, please spend no more than two minutes doing this. Sometimes people like can't decide on a book. I wanted to, because um, most of you went to school in the States, um, most of you took American Lit. So um, I, I ask you to pick a, a book by an American author. Um, I still had tons of students pick like, um, I had somebody pick Animal Farm, which is actually a British author. Um, or wait, there's another British one. Um, I forget the other one. Uh, Harry Potter, <laughs> British author, <laughs> um, um, which is actually fine. Um, if you guys want to pick uh, one of those more notorious texts, that's fine. Um, I just say an American author, mostly because I know that there's a lot of uh, secondary sources written about uh, um, those classical American texts that you read in school. So if it's a book you read in high school, or if it's a book that a lot of you have read, um, there's likely going to be research on it. If it's a book that was published in the last year, I wouldn't go with that. Um, and as a group, I want you to pick a book that hopefully most of you have read, though that's not super important at this point. It just, it's, it's a little bit helpful um, in the second part, but so just come up with a book. Likely a work of fiction will be easiest because there's a lot of, there's too many English professors writing too much about literature. So you can just pick one. Um, so I say American author, it's okay if you want to stray beyond that. It's just to kind of give you a basis. If it's a classic American literature, a work of literature, you're going to have a lot written about it. Um, pick one, right? And then you're going to give us the title, the author, when it was published, the publisher. So you could probably use the library catalog to find that or Google um, just to find, okay, like who published this book? Um, and then um, you guys are APA. So then make an APA citation, something that a lot of you still need to kind of work on. Um, but this is the cool part about doing this in a group. Um, <clears throat> Some of you are, may already be familiar with APA, especially international students. A lot of times they use APA. Um, but if you're not, as a group, you get to sit to work together to try to figure out <laughs> um, how to write up that citation. Hopefully this will only take you a few minutes, okay? Um, again, you have multiple brains working on this. The secret to this task, well, we'll get there in a second. Okay, um, then you're gonna find a source that has an opinion on this, this book that you selected, okay? That's when you're going to go into LMU One Search or Google Scholar or both, have one person go to one, one person go to the other, whatever. And you're going to try to find an article that has an idea about that, uh, about this source. Basically, you need to be able to sum up the thesis of that article, which if it has an abstract um, or if you read the first couple paragraphs, you should hopefully be able to identify. If you're not good at that yet, that's why we're kind of forcing you to practice it. Um, and you just find a source that has an idea about this book. And then you're gonna find another secondary source 
because we're gonna, we're positioning this book as your primary source. You're writing a paper about whatever book you select. You find one secondary source that says something about that book. And then you're gonna find another source that somehow disagrees with this source. And one of the big lessons here um, is that what, it, what a counter argument is can really depend on positioning um, and doesn't have to be as direct as you think. So don't have blinders on. If one source says Harry Potter um, is using literal witchcraft in its fiction, um, you don't have to find a source that says Harry Potter is using fake witchcraft in its fiction. Like that, that's such a direct counter, that's almost crazy. Um, that'll be really, really hard to find. Instead, you can find something much more open. Um, C is the hardest part. People really get bogged down with this. Um, and I want you to start here. I don't know if you're gonna get to two, though hopefully you will. Let's see if let's see how fast you, your cohorts cohorts are. Um, the hope is you can you come up with your book, you come up with a thesis of one source, you come up with a thesis that's a semi counter argument, and then using synthesis, you have your primary source, you have these two ideas about it, and then you have your brains. You're gonna come up with a fake paper idea for it. So you're gonna suddenly make this link. Okay, if source A is saying this and source B is saying this about this book I'm writing about, um, what do I say? And you're going to create a fake paper topic um, and a fake thesis statement about those things. Again, I'm not really interested in like super accurate portrayals, but it must be reflecting the ideas that you're identifying here. We're gonna start here. Um, just find these if that's all you can find. This process is important enough. But the secret to this, and please, please do it this way. Every so many times, students, groups, they go, okay, you find this source, you find this source, you find this source, but all of these sources are dependent upon one another. So if you send somebody to go look for a source B before you have a source A, it's gonna be a lot harder to find a counter argument. Um, it's better to just all do this together. And again, it will go faster if you have three to five brains working on something, whereas if you just had one. So we're just talk it out, work on all this together. If, if three to five of you are researching a piece on this and skimming stuff, one of you is going to be like, okay, I found this one. I think it's saying this. I think that'll be easy to find a counter. And then some other people will be like, all right, let's go look for a counter for that one and see if we can find it. Um, this should be pretty efficient, but again, it's, some, it's still kind of new to you to be an efficient researcher. So just do your best. If you can get to number two, that would be awesome. Okay, let's start there. Um, there's more beyond that. If you can get to that, that's crazy money. But for now, let's just stick with this. So um, you can find this worksheet under the uh, in-class stuff for today. It's called Updated 7th Edition WS Collegiate Research. It's a really terrible title. Um, um, and don't worry about um, uploading it to the discussion board yet because I want to see how far everybody gets and then decide how to proceed, okay? So breakout rooms into your, these are organized, right? According to cohorts. Okay, so one of, one of you has only two people. So you guys have a super challenge, but the bright side is you have less voices telling you which direction to go. So for the group that only has two people, y'all are gonna be great, <laughs> I believe in you. Somebody might be unassigned, we'll see. No, it looks like they all are. Oh, okay. Yeah, because well, we have five and four. Well, let's just, we'll send them and then. Yeah, let's just see what happens, yeah. Okay, go team, go. Yes, yeah, so we have about five minutes left. Um, okay, so it sounds like at least some of you got through all of it, or if not some of it. Um, what, so what was kind of, what was more challenging about this? Like what was, what were some of the harder parts about it? Or what was easy? Uh, for our group, mm -hmm. um, we chose the outsiders. Um, that, oh, nice. that yeah. Classic very it was a very enjoyable book yeah. and i think the hardest part for us was like the actual like research because like if you go on google scholar or like just like a lot of like databases like um the outsiders could be like um it's not just a novel like but there were like also like a lot of like other titles that like had stuff to do about like institutionalization of like prisoners yeah. and stuff yeah, like that like regarding them as like societies the outsiders and then yeah, so that how was, do you like, fix that that's a great um answer. honestly like it was like really hard because we use like different like keywords like the author's name awesome. and then like the dates like it was written to and like it was still like really hard to like hone in cool yeah so 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 it's good going to the authors was really really smart um using literature <laughs> or um um the author's name did you do the author's name in quotes and the outsiders in quotes 
Uh, I did not do that in quotes, actually. Yeah, so. yeah. So quotes will be, quotes are your friend. One of the key lessons is, um, especially when it's something you know 100% will be in there, quote it. If it's something you think should be in there, you can just throw it without quotes. Um, but yeah, if you put the author's last name in quotes um, or first and last name in quotes and the title, that would probably help you. But, but that's a huge point um, to notice uh, is that when you're using a phrase that's really commonly used elsewhere, even though you're talking about the title, you have to then think, okay, how do I get this stupid computer to get what I'm actually trying to say? Um, and that's where you have to like get creative. So that's an awesome point. Um, what else? Good job, Colin. Another thing that, uh, or at least I did just to add on to Colin was, um, after we searched the outsiders to um, search in, inside of the cited, the sources that cited it, yeah. and then use keywords inside of there to try and find more specific articles. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's a, literally a tool I just learned about today. And that's huge. If you can find one kind of solid piece, you can then look from there, like who are they referencing? What are they saying? Um, awesome. I love that. All right. What about another group other than Frankie and Collins? One more. Give me something. Uh, our group did the catcher in the eye. So nice. like uh, finding, like we didn't have that issue of uh, finding other words. So it's pretty straightforward for the the research base, but I think finding like a, a counter argument was definitely, definitely uh, a little bit more difficult than, than I thought, mm -hmm. just based yeah. on the, uh, like the one opinion we took finding a counter argument, like you guys said, uh, it didn't have to be a direct counter argument. So we kind of like, we went with something that was different, like just different than the, uh, than the original opinion. We've, yeah. 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 So, so that's great. So tell me what you did. Can you like give me a quick synopsis? So like, the one source said this and what did the other source so say? So the first source we focused on, uh, or just focused on how critics found large successes in, uh, in the book and why they found the successes right away. And okay. then so at first we were kind of thinking about doing the complete opposite, but then we're like, oh, we'll just take a critic's different opinion and a different opinion. So then the second opinion is just uh, focuses on the language and the book and, and the effectiveness of that. So it's different from what the other critics said in that way. Yeah, yeah. And then what's cool, I, I don't know if you guys got to number two, but um, what's cool about that is from there, you can be that link. So you can be like, so the reception of Catcher in the Rye was varied, like some scholars focus on the language, asserting this, other scholars focus on whatever else this is. It's kind of broad what you said, so I'm not quite sure what it was. But, um, and then you, and you can say, what do we assert? We assert that not only is the language powerful and impactful, but there's a messaging within there that's 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 worth exploring and something we want to dig into deeper. Um, even if you don't get that full argumentative position, you're you are in a position to triangulate your ideas between two others, and that's again what you do with synthesis. If you come up with your ideas from the research, um, you're far more likely to a have a have a an easier time in the research process, but. Um, it kind of keeps this openness to new ideas um, and the ideas of others that then can inform your own. So um, that's an awesome, awesome lesson to learn is that like a counter argument, um, and especially in this class, a counter argument, and, and it is something we're gonna push you to think of is I want you to honestly think of, okay, somebody who's reasonable, sane and intelligent, like how could somebody disagree with this? And if so, like how? Um, thinking about that is really, really important about that direct disagreement. But when you're just looking for like a variety of ideas, it doesn't have to be that direct. And sometimes that's just the lesson of research. You have to get a little more creative. You can't just have these blinders on. I need to find somebody who says this. I need to find somebody who says this. Um, that can limit your ideas and, and, and the um, level of information you need. So um, if you guys could upload this to discussion board, ignore the questions that asked you to do. If just one person from your group could please upload that just so I could see what you've done. That'd be great. Um, and then do we have any announcements? Professor Kaplan. Um, I don't think so. I'm not um, finished with your topic proposals yet, but hopefully in the next few days. Um, so, and then on Tuesday, we'll introduce the next assignment. The next paper, yeah. yeah. So you just have your pre-class stuff for Tuesday. Cool. Um, all right, everyone. Well, thank you for a good class today. Um, and just, yeah, just make sure you, each of the group, let's say there's four of you, each of the cohorts up, upload, um, just one of you needs to upload it. And again, ignore the questions on the discussion board, okay? Thank you, everyone. All right, have a good week. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, happy Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, happy no one left. Hey, <laughs> no one last. That's okay.